Hello and welcome back to the Power Switch, gaming's call-in talk radio show. My name is Peter Spezia, and today is April 26th, 2018. This is the 41st episode of the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We use Discord as a means to add and drop callers to talk about video games and switch the power that is found in a typical gaming podcast. You can join our server to participate during recordings at rhymeswithasia.com slash call. On today's episode, Nintendo's Q1 Financials in our headline roundup. Our main topic is early Sony E3 2018 predictions, and then we will get to your calls if you are tuning in live on Discord. So we're recording on a Thursday this week, which is strange because I I usually say, oh yeah, weekly shows on Saturday, do the whole sports call-in talk radio format, but about games, and it's it's a good time. And if we have big breaking stories during the week, We'd have you know shows at like 6 p.m. Eastern time. We're trying this out and seeing if that works. Uh, but yeah, my weekend is slammed. I mean, Avengers Infinity War is this weekend. We're going to go see that. And then I have to go to like my first ever bachelor party because I'm standing up in someone's wedding. It's the first time I'm in the, the groom party. That's It's going to be interesting. And then I'm just straight up traveling Sunday. Uh, so that's a couple day work trip. So trying to make this work uh, for a show today to give you something. And uh, let's see how that goes. Let's first get going with everything that's been happening in the games industry with our headline roundup. We start with Nintendo's financial meeting that they just had yesterday, and it comes with the big news attached with that there's a shakeup at the top of management. Uh, Tatsumi Kimishima is going to be stepping down as Nintendo's president over at NCL there in Japan. Now, he's 68 years old. He was supposed to be the interim president, taking over after Satoru Iwata's sudden passing. So on June 28th, which is, I believe, their shareholders meeting, kind of be like the next you know big Nintendo news thing after E3, uh, that's when the reins will pass to Shuntaro Furukawa. He's 46 years old, so he's taking over at a really good time. I think Kimishima did a marvelous job with the transition from Wii U to Switch. Nintendo is booming right now. All Furukawa has to do is kind of steady the ship. You know, just keep it going. Don't don't crash into anything. But you know, he's a young enough guy that that'll be a big, big uh, transition. But a big job, and hopefully he can fill those shoes well. But yeah, Switch absolutely is booming. Uh, they marked the sales progress at 17.79 million units sold as of March 31st, 2018. I mean. 17.79, that's a crazy number considering Nintendo's initial prediction was it's going to be 15 million. Analysts thought it would be 16 million by the time this meeting rolled around. So to even be out selling that, that's remarkable. Super Mario Odyssey is the system's best seller at 10.41 million units sold. That equates to a 58% attach rate. Not as crazy as the early days of oh, over 100% attach rate. Uh, not that crazy. And even then Mario Odyssey may be boosted a little bit because it was one of the bundle games certainly for Switch, uh, but that's remarkable that that's, you know, that's so high for, for a game, over 10 million units sold. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 9.22 million units sold has already outsold Mario Kart 8 on Wii U lifetime. That's in less than a year. That is certainly remarkable. And The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is now the best-selling Zelda title ever. It has 8.48 million units sold on Switch and more than a million on Wii U. That passes Twilight Princess as the formerly highest-selling Zelda game. Also in gaming news, Valve Corporation has purchased Campo Santo. If you recognize the name, that's the developer behind Firewatch. They are currently developing in the Valley of Gods, which is the sort of Egyptian exploration, sort of almost cell shaded like game that you saw at the Game Awards. Uh, definitely some big anticipation for that in 2019. Uh, but that's going to be a Valve game now. Uh, and it makes you wonder, like, what is Valve doing in terms of games and publishing those? Are they going to be making their own? Or are they just going to swallow other studios up with the money they have? That's definitely an interesting move, especially like. Now, is that game going to be PC exclusive, or is will that be on consoles as well? Something to keep an eye on. Quantic Dream is suing the uh, different journalists over in France, particularly at Le Monde, the newspaper there, uh, for their accusations of studio dysfunction and whatnot. This also comes at a time where Detroit Become Human now has a demo out on PlayStation 4. I'll talk about 
that a bit at the end of the show. I got to try that. But that's an interesting development in the whole David Cage, uh, you know, Quantic Dream. Is there toxicity there in that workplace, an inappropriate environment? Say what you will about David Cage. I mean, if they feel that strongly that they want to counter Sue, that'll be something to watch as well. Sony has announced their PlayStation Plus free games for May 2018. Speaking of David Cage, one of those is Beyond Two Souls on PlayStation 4. Uh, if you never got to try that one, it's an interesting game if you, you've played Heavy Rain. It's similar, but this is the Ellen Page game where narratively it was told sort of out of sequence and it made it kind of a mess to play uh, narratively. Um, I did have some fun with it though, I must say, uh, especially playing it co-op. It was a good time doing that. Uh, the PS4 version, I think, does have a version where you get to play those events linearly in the story, like chronologically. So I'd be interested to try that, but that game will be free. And then also Rayman Legends. I mean, you cannot pass on Rayman Legends if you've never played that one before. One of the best platformers, uh, certainly, of, you know, started with Wii U and then had that whole drama of all the different consoles there. Uh, very quick respawns, you know, constant action and really good platforming overall. Definitely try Rayman Legends. You also have Risen 3 Titan Lords on PS3, Eat Them on PS3, King Oddball, which is going to be on all platforms with the cross buy, but primarily on Vita, and then Furmans on PlayStation Vita. So good games all around, I would say. Fortnite continues to be in the news, not just because of how popular it is on console and PC, but different headlines within the last even 24 hours. You have rumors flaring up that it might be coming to Switch, which kind of throws back a bit to our last episode where we thought, would that be a possible Switch port at E3? Also, the event of you know, players have been seeing meteors in the sky. Well, those meteors are now landing. It's probably going to be a limited time thing, but that's a big deal for that community. And if you want to know just how much that game is making, you know, the free-to-play Battle Royale model, $223 million generated in March alone. That is simply remarkable. So Fortnite continues to be a runaway success. That's it's kind of amazing. And then, of course, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider reveal is set for tomorrow. So it's not happened yet. They're setting up for an event in London. People are showing pictures out of that. The box art looks really good. But by now, when you see this on YouTube or podcast services, Probably have the trailer there. Go check that out. So let's get to the main topic. Uh, I'd like to talk more about some early E3 2018 predictions. I did have fun with that last time talking about Nintendo. And like I said, this is for our E3 yes or no contest. Like in the past, I've I've put out these questions that we have as a contest where people answer and whoever does the best gets to come on the podcast after E3 when it's all said and done. But ahead of time, I put out 50 yes or no questions of what I think kind of the talking points are and kind of the thought points going into E3. You get 10 Microsoft questions, you get 10 Sony questions, 10 Nintendo questions, 10 all about ranging from all the different third parties. And then we have 10 games that are kind of vaporware. Like, is this the year for news about this game? It's a good time. Last episode on the Power Switch, you talked about Nintendo. And granted, these are early predictions. I mean, gosh, we're almost a month away from the contest starting, and then it'll be a couple weeks until E3. Now, granted, things can change until then. Like I said, with, with these PlayStation questions, when I came up with them a few weeks ago, this I, one of the questions was, you know, will Spider-Man have a specific release date revealed at E3? Well, you know, the game decided to do that for us before E3, so things can change before the start of the contest. I wanted to give you a sense, though, where I am right now when it comes to Sony and PlayStation and all things with that brand, kind of the 10 questions I have in mind right now before we eventually get into the contest, but just to kind of provide some possible talking points for you out there. Number one, will new PlayStation hardware, a console, a handheld, or VR 2.0 be announced? Of course, you know, possibilities abound for each of these. Will we hear anything just hinting towards PlayStation 5? Uh, a handheld, does Sony let Nintendo run away with that market with the Switch? And VR 2.0, I mean, are they waiting for PlayStation 5 or will they have a new updated model coming still for PlayStation 4? All possibilities. Number two, 
Will the conference open with a live orchestral performance? I mean, it certainly worked for the last couple years, right? With God of War and Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. I'd like to see another orchestral performance. I'd like to see really the format that Sony's really gotten down with trailer, trailer. Don't stop the pacing to have people say, I'm going to come out and talk to you about my game. I mean, there are panels for that. Jeff Keighley does all that. I don't need to see it in the conference. I want to see the moments, really. Uh, so, but opening up with the, the orchestra. That'd be really cool to see. I'd, I'd like that. But will it happen? Number three. Will gameplay footage be shown from any of the following? The Last of Us Part 2. Death Stranding. Ghost of Tsushima. This is going to be an interesting one because all of them have shown trailers. We kind of know what the game might look like as an overall feel. But we haven't seen any actual gameplay. I mean, sure, we've seen cutscenes or things like that from The Last of Us Part Two, Death Stranding, trailers abound. And then we had the Paris Games Week trailer for Ghosts of Tsushima. Um, but I'd like to see some gameplay. If any, I think would be possible. I think the first look at Last of Us Part Two, But it would only be just a little glimpse and nothing beyond that. I, I think all of those are pushing late 2019 at the very earliest. So this may be too early, but will it happen? Number four, will Days Gone or Dreams receive specific release dates? Both games that have kind of been shown for a while, teased in different capacities, but both that should be pretty near release, you know, either at the end of the year or early next year. I mean, Dreams with the beta, Days Gone, we saw it near, like, near the beginning and at the end of, of one of the E3s. It might have been even last year. Um, but yeah, will we see specific release dates for either of those? Just one of them, or both. Number five, will PlayStation Now or backwards compatibility be mentioned at all during the conference? Of course, if it is, this would be a reference or a shot across the bow to Microsoft, who has honestly been killing it with the Xbox Game Pass, with the 360 backwards compatibility. When you're behind in the console race, you have to do things to try to make up ground, if not for this console generation, but for the next. It will be interesting to see if the console race leader responds to this at all. Number six, will Bluepoint announce that they are remaking one of the following titles? Metal Gear Solid, Demon's Souls, Infamous. Now, the Bluepoint uh, remaster, it may be too early to hear from them. Let's put that out there first and foremost. I mean, they just came off of Shadow of the Colossus, but in an interview shortly thereafter, they did tease that they are working on their next remaster project before they want to try to go and develop their artists and maybe build their own new IP. But as far as remastering goes, uh, you know, they have said that they're working on a big franchise. Like it's a, it's a big undertaking for them. I do wonder if they'll stick with Sony. First of all, I mean, it'd be kind of crazy if they're like, Nope, we're jumping to Nintendo and it's going to be Ocarina of Time <laughs> full remastered Unreal Engine on Switch or something. That, that'd be nuts. But as far as these ones go, I mean, Metal Gear Solid, if you see something like taking that game and giving the whole blue point, new fresh of life paint of coat, like that would be fantastic to see for Metal Gear Solid. Uh, a lot of people talking about Demon Souls, like they throw that one out there as one that they should do, you know, after all you know, Dark Souls remastered and how well Bloodborne did. Uh, a lot of people point to Demon Souls on PS3 and say, give that uh, a PS4 remastered, though I don't think that would be giving Bluepoint enough credit for how much work they can do. I mean, did you see what they did with Shadow of the Colossus? That was a crazy improvement. That was so good. Infamous is something personally I'd like to see. I think Infamous 1 and 2 are due for a PS4 remaster, especially we've had some breath between Second Son. Let's see some more infamous, but bring the two games back on PS4. So will, first of all, will Bluepoint be there? And second, will it be any of those games? Number seven, will more than one PlayStation VR game, that is not an add-on experience to another title, receive a trailer during the conference? Now, they seem to do this for the last couple shows, whether it was PSX or the last E3. But you have to consider, like, if we're getting close to PS5 
And you know, if PlayStation VR is getting another improvement there, are PSVR games going to kind of lie low for a little while to build up for almost like a second launch there? It's something to possibly consider. But more than one, I think, could be pretty likely. But you never know. They have that kind of playing in the background there. Number eight. Will From Software show more of the project known as Shadows Die Twice? Of course, Shadows Die Twice, this is the literally 10-second teaser that was shown at the Game Awards last year. I say, oh, Jeff Keighley here from Japan, you know, bones, tweaking, uh, you know, people almost wonder, is this going to be a new IP altogether? Is this going to be bringing back Tenchu? Or is it really just Bloodborne 2? I mean, a lot of possibilities there, but Shadows Die Twice, do we see what this project is? Number nine, will Final Fantasy VII Remake or Shenmue 3 be mentioned at all during the conference? We're coming up on what, like three years removed from that magical E3 2015 conference? You know, Shenmue 3 just keeps getting pushed back and back. Final Fantasy VII Remake, I mean, rumors out and articles out, possibility uh, the last couple days actually, that they may be starting over from scratch. Cyber Connect 2 may have botched it so badly that, you know, Square Enix is, you know, they brought it internally. They want it to exceed the original and just be this huge project. And they may be starting from scratch. So, I don't know. Will any of them be even mentioned? Because yeah, we're, we're getting a bit removed from those, those magical moments at E3 2015. And number 10, will PlayStation users finally be able to change their PSN names? Now, if this question sticks, I think it's just the announcement would count. It doesn't have to be you can change it right now or after the show or tomorrow. Just the fact like, yeah, like it's coming. Like the fact that like it's... They've been confident enough to say it publicly. I think that would be news enough. But man, that, I, I think that would almost be more effective as a PSX reveal later this year if they are indeed working on it. Uh, but man, that would be that'd be another big moment. It's like to finally catch up and, and do that. And then, yeah, all those terrible PSN user names can maybe be changed. So yes, 10 early predictions, but more just almost in a way thought experiments, you know, yes or no, what could possibly happen? So new PlayStation hardware announced. Will the conference open with a live orchestral performance? Gameplay footage of either Last of Us Part Two, Death Stranding, or Ghosts of Tsushima. Uh, Days Gone or Dreams receiving a specific release date. PlayStation Now or backwards compatibility mention. Bluepoint either working on Metal Gear Solid, Demon's Souls, or Infamous. More than one PlayStation VR game that is not an add-on experience receiving a trailer during the conference. Uh, From Software showing more of Shadows Die Twice. Final Fantasy VII Remake or Shenmue 3 mentioned at all during the conference. And then PlayStation users being able to change those PSN names. Lots to consider, lots to think about. That's what I have to say when we come back. We'll get to the callers. You can talk about that main topic and talk about our headlines in that headline roundup. Games you're playing recently, anything is on the table for you to discuss. That's all when we come back here on the Power Switch. Welcome back to the Power Switch. This week's Tempo Control music is brought to you by Night in the Woods. You can find a new video game music top 10 list from a specific game soundtrack every Tuesday over at youtube.com slash rhymes with Asia. So nobody here to call in today. Uh, you got a couple listening. Totally cool, but no pitches. Totally understand. Uh, got to figure out if six o'clock works. Is it too early? Uh, a little constrained on my end by our sleep schedules and we wake, we wake up early. So we go to bed early and so I'm, and I'm right next to the bedroom as far as our recording setup. So it's a little tough on that front, especially with East Coast time. Uh, I'll we'll have to figure something out or maybe we just have to wait for a big news story during the weekday uh, to really have people want to talk about it. This is just a totally fluke thing. I'd usually have time on the weekend, but man, it's, it's just not the week for it. But still wanted to get something out to you. Let's get into what I've been playing. Uh, got more into God of War really, really delivering and enjoying that one. So as far as where I am for the sake of avoiding spoilers, I'm about seven hours in uh, and I just received my first couple side quests or favors as they call them. And that's after my first return to Midgard. Uh, that's, 
I, I'm really looking forward to how they're setting up the world exploration, how they're setting up, you know, the progression system is going great. Having more fun with the combat too. I mean, I think part of it for me is like, I was just forgetting to use my shield, but you get certain the certain power-ups where you're you're countering with parries, uh, and even that that last one with the projectiles. I mean that oh that's super, super fun. Really enjoying that. Can't wait to play more. It's it's more a matter of and it's a struggle when you get to be an adult and you don't have as much time to just sit down and burn a whole weekend or a whole night or something like that to playing a game. Uh, but when this game is really all about like, do not spoil kind of like almost like Avengers Affinity War, right? Like, do not spoil this. Like, you need to experience it as soon as you can. And for a game that's, you know, saying it's about 25 hours or so for the campaign, uh, that's it's a tall order. It's going to be spread out over a while. Uh, so I couldn't imagine myself playing that for the next few weeks. And uh, things muted on Twitter, trying to avoid all of that. I just hope it doesn't get ruined for me. That, that would be really, really unfortunate. Um, I think I'll be playing that until end of May with Detroit Become Human. Uh, I got to play the demo. I'm sh I mean, you can download that now on PSN and give it a try if you'd like. I mean, the whole the mission is, God, it's a half an hour at maybe 45 minutes at not even a half an hour. Uh, but if you want to experience all the different possible outcomes and endings, sure, that would be more time. Uh, it is the hostage situation that we saw during one of the conferences with Connor, the android, and Daniel's holding the little girl off, off the edge of the the rooftop. And uh, yeah, it's we, we've seen it before. I'm glad I actually didn't wait in line at PAX East to play it because it was definitely available there. But nice of PlayStation to make that available. Only a couple gigabyte download. Uh Gave me a good sense to try it out, and I am excited for that game. I know David Cage, a very controversial figure. Some people are like, I don't want to give him any of my money, and certainly that's that's your prerogative. But Heavy Rain was one of my favorite experiences, among them, certainly, on uh, PlayStation 3. Beyond, as I said, like, I kind of liked it. Uh, not as much, certainly. Uh, yes, there are writing concerns with David Cage uh, in his games, and he, he would certainly be someone who wants to make movies, but I like the kind of narrative games that it presents. I mean, with a kind of very dramatic point and click adventure in a way, the game looks gorgeous. I mean, I was enraptured by the concept, even starting with Kara, what, 2013, 2012, whenever that original trailer came out. And I'll admit it, you know, living in the Metro Detroit area, a game called Detroit granted, you know, subtitle become human kind of appeals to me. I, I mean, seeing how they construct the downtown with the Renaissance Center still there. Some of you who've been to Yomacon, I mean, that appeals to me. Not going to lie. I'm, I'm very interested to give that a try. So uh, that'll probably be the next big game that I buy and play. But then, yeah, I have, I have God of War to play until then. And I'll try not to... Uh, you know, say with all these episodes leading up until then, be like, I, I, I put this much more into God of War, but uh, that'll probably be happening for a while. As far as games that are coming out this week, actually tomorrow, one that I missed uh, on last Saturday's episode, Monster Prom is coming to PC. Uh, you know, if you're listening today, Friday, April 27th, uh, that is kind of a kind of parody of the you know, dating simulator sort of game uh, where you're having six different almost like NPCs, you know, that you need want to ask one of them to the prom, but they're all monsters. It's it's kind of an intriguing concept. I saw it a little bit at PAX East. Good to know that it's coming out uh, starting on PC and, of course, Mac and Linux to go along with that. Tuesday, May 1st, the notable one there is Super Mega Baseball 2. It's on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Notable, though, that it's on Xbox One for free as part of their games for gold. Uh, if you're an Xbox Live Gold member, you can play Super Mega Baseball 2, and own that for free as long as you're a gold member. Then on Friday, May 4th, bring in the funk with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on Nintendo Switch with Funky Mode. Uh, if you've never played that game, I highly, highly recommend it. It is a difficult platformer. Uh, it's definitely fun with a friend, I'm sure, with the Joy-Cons. That really you know, adds to the element of you know giving it a try with, with someone. Um, whether you're passing it back and forth or whatnot, uh, I do have you know fond memories playing that game. It's it's difficult, but a whole lot of fun. One of 
the best games on, on Wii U. And you're seeing a lot actually from those Nintendo financials that the Wii U games coming over to Switch, I mean, Mario Kart, as an example, uh, it's performing really well. I mean, you wonder why they're bringing over those Wii U ports because they sell well. So, I mean, what, May 18th, later in the month, I mean, they have Hyrule Warriors uh, Definitive Edition. That should really sell well, I think. Uh, so something to keep an eye on as, as those Wii U ports come across. And that'll do it for this episode of The Power Switch. We are hosted by RhymesWithAsia.com and we're on YouTube and Twitch at RhymesWithAsia. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Power Switch. And you can email us any questions, concerns, comments, or opportunities at powerswitchpod at gmail.com. You can subscribe to The Power Switch on podcast services such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Stitcher. And if you could be so kind as to leave a review, that would really help as well. But most importantly, to participate in future episodes, to call in on Discord, you should visit our community there by visiting rhymeswithasia.com slash call. It is a small but growing community. And if today is any indication, uh, now is the perfect time to have your voice heard on this podcast. So call in and talk about whatever you'd like. Wrapping up with a YouTube video to watch, do give the Sonic Mania Plus trailer a try. Uh, the game did get announced for North America for a July 17th release date. If you already own Sonic Mania, a $5 DLC add-on is remarkable. A lot of people were thinking it was going to be 10 but 5 that is a steal for what they're going to be adding to this game. You can get the game for $30. They're adding also a physical version. If that is something that interests players, I think even like a holographic color. But man, this trailer, let me tell you, uh, Hyper Potions is the chiptune music group that you know did the uh, what, the opening trailer in a way for Sonic Mania, the first one. They did a new song for this one, almost like a remix in a way, because they added Jun Sunoe from Crush 40, the guitar player there. Uh, the electric guitar of Crush 40 mixed with uh, Hyper Potions chiptune music is so good goddamn good you have to listen to it also you get to see you know gameplay from mighty the armadillo and ray the flying squirrel different elements there that should be a whole lot of fun to jump back into sonic mania july 17th so give that reveal trailer a watch yeah final thoughts um yeah we'll have to see if this time works or doesn't work for people or is this just an odd obscure thing where I needed to bump it up to give you something this week uh, because otherwise I could not record on the weekend at all Uh, and maybe it would take a big news story during the weekday to actually sort of force an episode that people would be itching to call in or is it just a timing issue things to consider but anyway that's what's happening here stay tuned on discord to uh, figure out what is changing as everything develops and making announcements when our next episode will be Regardless whether it is live or on your own time, I look forward to you joining us for that next episode. With that, I am Peter Spacia. Until next time, switch up, call in, game on.